Praise the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let the living shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let the living stand on their feet and shout a wonderful, thunderous hallelujah to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, to the I am that I am. Jesus, we worship you. Begin to appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in our midst. Begin to appreciate him. Thank him for another hour. Thank him for you being alive. Jesus, we worship you. We bless you. We thank you for today. We give you praise. We give you glory. Be thou exalted. Be thou glorified. Jesus, we thank you. We bless you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. We exalt you, Lord. Be thou glorified. Close your eyes and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank him for you being alive. It is a privilege. Father, we worship you. God, we bless you. We thank you, Lord. We exalt you. We bless you, Lord. Jesus, I honor you. Lord, I glorify you. Lord, I bless you. Thank you for today. Thank you for this topic. Thank you for this message. Thank you for being with us throughout this morning. God, we worship you, Lord. Ancient of days, we bless you, Lord. Father, we worship you, Lord. Thou art worthy. We are before the King of Kings, worshiping with all your heart. Worthy, O oh Lord. Glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are. the king of kings honor him for who he is
of prayer tell the Lord how much you love him father I love you with all my heart because without you Lord I'm nothing Jesus I love you I appreciate you I thank you for dying for me thank you for saving me thank you for salvation thank you for keeping me alive thank you for fighting my battle thank you for being my God my maker oh Lord Jesus I honor you I worship you this evening I give you all the praise I give you all the glory I join the 24 elders to bow before you this evening I say thou art worthy O Lord Jesus I worship you Abba Father I glorify you Lord I cover this session with the blood of Jesus I pray you will come and speak to us you are worthy to be praised thank you ancient of days for in Jesus mighty name we have worship everlasting king we thank you for today we give you praise we give you glory lord the hour has come for your children to know your way your truth father i am here to tell them the horror of hell i pray that god they will not only hear that we believe and they will escape in the name of jesus i am here to tell them what false doctrine is doing to people today in hell and i pray the ministers that are here they will change for good that their life will not be the same again in jesus name their churches their denomination will not be the gateway to hell but the gateway to heaven from today in the name of jesus father lord i bless you i come against every distraction of the devil i destroy the power of unbelief in the heart of any minister here in the name of jesus the scale that was in the eye of Saul and when you remove it to become Apostle Paul may the scale remove from their eyes today and they will become a great servant of God in holiness and in righteousness in Jesus name I pray I cover myself with the blood of Jesus speak to me O Lord let your children hear your voice thank you for what you are going to do in advance and thank you for blessing us in Jesus mighty name I pray Put your hands together and take your beautiful seat. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I'm happy to be here with you this evening, standing before you, to give you this wonderful message. I call it wonderful because it is good for we to hear message from hell. Jesus is doing all at this end time so that you and i will escape hell there is nothing secret again about eternity god is revealing eternity to man for man to know that when you die there is life after death because the world we are living for years we believe when somebody died they are sleeping you have never seen anything bad about a dead body everywhere you go is rest in peace so people believe that everybody is resting they are in peaceful place but God has made it possible for us in this our end time when he's coming for we to know that not all that have died are resting in peace. Some are in peace, some are in sorrow, some are regretting, some wish to come back. Hallelujah. And God is doing this for you and I to know and how we can escape hell. Hallelujah. But before I go into my message, the problem today in the church in the denomination what is making people to miss heaven and to go to hell one of the things is false doctrine i speaking to you my name is mrs linda paul rica aka sister linda the sister linda maybe some of you thought i have died i'm still alive the lord bless you for coming in jesus name i was under a pastor that preached false doctrine but i didn't know that time and i believe it with all my heart and i practice it to all my soul and then I died in that ignorance and then I went straight to hell. And that false doctrine landed me in hell because all what I was practicing, it was not the right way to go to heaven. I never knew there is, there is standard way for, to go to heaven. But my pastor was preaching something that seems good to me and it was sweet in my flesh. It was a kind of preaching. But that time I didn't know it was a kind of preaching. I was thinking it was the sweet preaching and because they used to say, we are under grace hallelujah my pastor used to say my former pastor used to say preaching about hell 
It's a horrible thing. Don't put fear into people. Jesus has paid our price. I've taken our sins away. We are under grace. So there's nothing we should preach that will make people to fear God or fear God is a loving God. So that mentality was in my head that no matter what I do, as long as I believe in Jesus, I call on Jesus. Maybe if I want to die now, if I'm sick for long, I can just call on Jesus. And they have told me that Jesus so loves human beings that he cannot cast us to hell. So that mentality I was working, even when I was committing my sin, I still believe Jesus loved me. And if I want to die, if God give me opportunity to seek for long, I will just call on him and he will give me heaven. But I never know it was a false doctrine. I never knew we need to walk out our salvation with fear and trembling. So before I go into my message, today I'm going to talk about divine encounter with people. With people, sorry. Divine encounter with people in hell, past and present. Hallelujah. I'm going to refresh your memory with some people you have heard about, you knew them before they died. And some, this is going to be your first time to hear about their, 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 their death, where they ended. It's good for me to be telling you that it is not only to come to hurry more or not only to say, I believe in Jesus. You can be in this movement and if you are not serious, you are not holy, you are not taking a doctrine serious, you are not applying it well in your life, you will still miss heaven. And you that you are out there, you are disbelieving and criticizing, you will still miss heaven. So it's, it's two-way side. All what God wants is seriousness, obedience to the word, keep his commandments, and then you will make it to heaven. Hallelujah. But before I go through, I want to tell, I want them to show you a few videos before I go into my message. Because why I want you to listen to this message. I was touched by our pastor testimony yesterday, the pastor from, from um, Port Harcourt. It was really a thrill to me because what he's saying is true. We are people those days, we put on on TV, connecting our faith to pastors preaching on the TV. Many people have been possessed by that. But many people, our eyes are still blind. So when he was preaching yesterday, I said, you can see how these pastors that we thought that people believe that they are men of God, they preach well, but see their error. Today, I am going to show you a crafty canal or how will I put it? Pastors that preaches as if when you listen to it, if you don't have designing spirit or you are not in the, in the Lord well, you will be carried away. And they are very crafty and corny. And you know some of them are learned. So they know how to put the scriptures, speak good English. But I'm going to show you another side of generals. People that know the word of God. And God's so lucky that I come across the same scriptures, false, false pastors are interpreting. And the same scriptures where our father in the Lord, our father in the Lord, Daddy Rika, and our father, our grandfather in the Lord, Daddy Kumui is preaching. The same thing for you to know how many people used to deceive the scripture. Today you will see the scripture that John C. Suleiman was quoting and was giving wrong interpretation and blow up the mind of the congregation, putting them into darkness, destruction. And that is the same scripture. Our father, our grandfather in the Lord, which is Daddy Kumwe, preaches again and you will see the light in it. I, I, I compare this too for you to know that when you hear people preaching scripture, they will bring it into their own way. But if you don't come across the right man of God, I will tell you the right scripture. This Bible, this Bible, the word there, they are life and they are spirit. It can kill you. So it's for you to know where you will be a mentor. Who you, will men, who you admire as a mentor, as your mentor. And then you will see another man of God, a man of pastor that is preaching about head covering. The way he says it, no woman in that ministry will believe by covering head is righteous. They will believe that covering head is a sin. They will never cover their head if they are under that kind of pastor. And me talking to you here, the former church I was going to, we didn't believe in covering head. So I never cover my head going to church. I can only put a little hat, one corner, and that hat is for fashion. That's what redeemed people are doing today. But when I have my encounter, Jesus told me I should cover my head. Jesus showed me a holy woman standing and it was rotating like a robot. And the woman dressed very well, covered herself. Her gown was down, not dragging like a, like a veil on the ground, but dressed very well. You cannot see any part of her body in the sense of her breast was showing, her heartbeat was showing, the gown was not showing. God was saying that you see, as you see this woman, dress decent. I am a decent God. When you go back to the world, dress decently. 
and the woman cover her hair, tie her hair. There are many things in my revelation I cannot be able to say all. So when I come across this message, why I like listening sometimes to them is not that I have time to be listening to a false preacher, but I'm bringing it because the Bible so should be our brother's keeper. If I don't bring it to your notice, some of you will not believe that they are fake. You will come across them and you get disturbed or you get confused. So now we are going to play for you short videos of the false preachers and the true preachers. How you see these people use scripture and twist it. And you will be like, ah, but it's in the Bible, but they are twisting it. And this is the problem today. That's why the church is hard to be cleaned. And Jesus told me, my church is dirty. My church is dirty. And why the church is dirty is false doctrine, false preachers. What they are preaching on the pulpit and people are complying to it. They are copying it. Whatever the pastor say, the members do it. That is what Jesus is crying about, false doctrine. So please, media, if you are ready, let's go with the first one. And then you will hear... A pastor in Winner's Chapel, the second in command to Bishop Oyedepo. What is talking about hellfire? These are things I want you to hear. And then you will judge for yourself to know that. If you are in those kind of ministry, I pray that God open your eyes. Because if you don't have the word that will put the fear of God in you, heaven will be far away for you. Heaven will be far away for Yes, let's go ahead before I go into my message. Media, are you ready? Please, let's just go. And now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Next verse. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of woman is a man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoured his head. You must always pay attention to what you read. Don't just read your religion into the Bible. He says the head of Christ is God. The head, the head, not hair, head, head of the man is Christ. The head of the woman is the man. So every woman praying, having her husband exposed, disgraced, insulted, embarrassed, is a shame to her. What is simply establishing is submission. To the leadership of a husband in the home at the church in Corinth that a woman is not supposed to expose and disgrace her husband and then come to church and be praying like a saint a woman has a responsibility to cover her head which is a husband and the husband has the responsibility not to cover his head which is Christ he should open Christ let people see Christ in his life let people see Christ by the way he preaches and teaches. That's what Paul was discussing. They are not calf, not head tie, not beret. He was discussing leadership and submission in the home. Have you heard? Looking very, looking very truthful. Mixing it very nice. And anybody that is in that ministry will never put, the women will not tie their head. And the men too that are here will be putting cap on their head and preaching because it is not about putting cap. It's not about removing cap. So these are the people moving the crowd today. You see him all over the internet. Have thousands of followers. And this is how people are rejoicing. Well, let's listen to somebody that knows the scripture very well. Let's look at the book of First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. But I would have you know that the hate of every man is Christ and the hate of the woman is the man and the hate of Christ is God every man praying or prophesying having his head covered dishonored his head but every woman that prayed or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonored her head there is this order God Christ man woman the bible now is talking about life in the presence of god it says god is the head of jesus christ in as much as jesus was a man sent to this world to be the head of the church is that so then man is under jesus jesus is the head of the man in the church then 
the man is the head of who is the head of the woman the bible now says if a man in the church is praying let that man leave his head there because the person who is in control is who is christ by leaving your hair there you show that this environment is christ he's the one in control here he is the headship here then as the man is to leave his head open woman is there competition of headship in the church covered the headship of man man is not the one ruling here it's jesus that is ruling here cover that of man and let only that of christ be seen in the church the glory we are looking for here is not the glory of a man man play in the in the presence of god with humility it's not your glory you are to impress upon the people not your glory but the glory we are looking for that the people came for is the glory of jesus leave your head with that covering to show that the glory here is the glory of jesus Ma woman it's not man's glory we are looking for here yes look at it in verse 7 for a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of god but the woman is the glory of man therefore he should cover his she should cover her head is that okay okay therefore she should cover her head in the presence of god whenever she comes in in prayer or she is in ministry in prophesying but in prayer or in prophesying why are you under man man was created before you woman respect him that's why the covering is there respect him that covering shows that you acknowledge the headship of man and god wants it so praise the lord you have seen the importance of covering head is to show that we are under submission to men in the church and men are not covering their head because christ is their head but now when the preacher is saying women should not put a tie or scarf on their head that does not what paul is mean it means that we should just respect our husband and leave our head open like that that the covering means that we should cover our husband's shame by our behavior that is a wrong twisted interpretation of the scripture so if you have a church or a ministry here you too you are telling women don't cover your head god said we should not cover our head open your head i want to tell you those people under you are sinning against god let's go to john c suleiman that said why ladies are not getting married is because they don't dance that when they dance they will begin to marry them and then papa kumi come up with your own account of it so let's just listen to it it very fast because what i'm bringing it these are people that they are very smart they will twist the scripture and many young ministers will follow them and begin to preach like them and copy the same doctrine and begin to tell people don't do like this no it is not like that this is the way and you never know that it is the wrong way let's go ahead please and the first thing about him is what he laughed the second about a drunkard which is very normal is that a drunkard staggers in fact when a person begins listen to me don't use the word stagger hold on i will tell you what to use when a drunkard you see somebody going like this whether he has said anything or not you ask him are you that's the dance a drunkard is a dancer have you noticed that once a man is drunk he starts singing every drunkard likes to sing i want to show you the place of dancing in spiritual warfare there are times you don't need to speak in tongues just dance wake up that night pray for five minutes dance now the reason many of us are not seeing testimonies is because we have not known the power of dancing in warfare dancing actually means moving your body god is after movement man is after moves man commends you when your moves rhymes with the song as far as god is concerned move your body anyhow 
God is after movement, man is after moves. Oh God, I don't know how to explain this. One time in Judges, hold on, <laughs> in Judges chapter 20, a nation called Benjamin. Benjamin is a part of Israel, is the last tribe of Israel. Benjamin was now fighting Israel, fighting their own brothers. Israel became so angry that Israel came after Benjamin and killed 25,000 of them in one day. Their own people. They killed 25,000 of them in one day. Israel was angry because Benjamin came after them. Judges 21. Judges 20 rather. Benjamin came after them. So Israel began to react. While they were killing the men of Benjamin, the men of Benjamin escaped. 600 of those men who were armed ran into a cave so that the, the other armies of Israel should not see them. They ran and went to hide in the cave. 600 of them. As they were hiding in that cave, Israel got angry. And in Judges 21, if you read from verse 1, Israel began to cry. They went to Mizpah and they began to cry to God in Mizpah. They said to God, How come that our own brother has done this to us? Killed our men. And all of them entered into a vow that no other part of Israel will give a wife to Benjamin. Nobody must marry from the tribe of Benjamin. Why they were in misbeh? If you read the, the chapter further, they began to show sympathy that the, our tribes are no more complete. Anyway, when we all came here to misbeh, which tribe? did not join us because then when israel conquers a nation there are some of them they kept take them into captivity they conquer their territory so when we came to misbeh who did not join us and they said a country a nation called a city called ja uh, jabesh gilead jabesh gilead was not part of us so they got angry we came to misbeh to pray about benjamin this jabesh gilead we conquered was not part of us go there kill everybody Spare only the women who have not had contact with a man. So they killed everybody and found out only 400 people who were virgins. They carried the 400 and said, Benjamin should not just go like that. Get out those 600 men from the cave. Give them the 400. When they gave them the 400, there were still 200 men who had no wives. They said, now go. They told them, they said, all of you, 200 of you, sit out here. You are in front of a city called Shiloh. Sit down. There are women that are going to come out now. Any one of them that dance. Anyone. Judges 21, if you read from verse 22, 23 down. Any one of them that dances. He said, take them for a wife. If their parents come to us and ask us what have you done that you allow them to take our wife, our children as wife? We will tell them that the children were due to marriage, but you were delaying them. Nobody's following me. I said, Nobody's following me. Bring up Judges 21 23. So many girls are not married because they cannot dance. And the children of Benjamin did so. And took them wives according to their number of them that dance whom they caught. Anytime you dance, favor catch you. Anytime you dance, breakthrough catch you. Anytime you dance, aye! praise the Lord. It's just that we don't have time, and then you will see the church. Our sisters are dancing. The mentality now have come on them that we should wind our ways, shake ourselves so that they will get married. A man will lost after that. These are preaching of lusting. It will steer immorality, make young men begin to watch those that can wind themselves very well and put thought into the young ladies to dance. Dance so that a man will see you and lost after you. Let's go to the last one to Dadikumui and see what he said. The same scripture. That will open your eyes to know the danger of dancing. You don't just dance. Tell people, David, dance. Scatter yourself. Let dance. There is spirit behind some kind of dancing that is indecent.
what happened to Herod and you know when people are like that although they go to the house of worship all they are looking for if the dancing is not there the worship is not interesting and after they have sung and danced and drummed and everything then they say they are listening to the word of God if the preacher goes beyond 15 20 minutes that's too long that's too long but if the preacher then uh, breaks uh, what he's saying and he's saying we're going to worship again the people were rejoiced because that's what they went for that's why if we're really going to get people out of sin out of laws out of immorality out of fornication out of adultery out of breaking homes of other people but these uh, young dancers if we're going to stem the situation and we're going to bring sanity into the churches all those things ought to stop so that you know people don't lose their minds Mind, they don't lose their head while they should give all their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ and we're looking at uh, Judges chapter 21 and we're reading from verse 21 Judges chapter 21 verse 21 and see and behold the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance in the dances Shiloh why was Shiloh eventually forgotten and brushed aside and thrown away by the Lord? The world came in. The practices of the Gentiles came in. That is why, although Shiloh was a place of worship and a place of great celebration before, eventually God said, why Peter? Because all these things came in, then come ye out of the vineyard and catch you every man is wife you're looking for somebody to marry just going to the dancing hall and then you'll see them as they shake themselves and then as you like what you see pick whoever you want of the daughters of shiloh and go to the land of benjamin and then he tells us in verse 23 he says and the children of benjamin did so and he took them wives according to the number of them that danced a parental consent uh -uh, that's not that's not there when you just see them in the dance i love you i appreciate you are you married are you available in fact i feel you should go home now why not and then from the dancing hall they wait and the real process of marriage they won't achieve anymore it happens in those uh, churches where they have all these uh, young people and it is by the look looking at their body and looking at how they shake themselves and then they hug themselves they kiss themselves and uh, with that feeling the young man while they're dancing there saying uh, can we continue together can this happen and the lady too of course and they do a little bit of drinking and they have a little bit of drugs they have a little bit of everything their senses are not accurate anymore or perfect anymore to think about the future it's only the merriment and the fleshly enjoyment of the hour they are thinking about and so they took them of the number that danced and it says whom they called and they went and returned to their inheritance and repaired the cities and dwelt in them look at verse 25 it tells us the conclusion of how and why they did what they did in those days there was no king in Israel hallelujah put your hands together for Jesus why why they did that there was no king God was not speaking sin was everywhere that was not how to get a wife they didn't follow the process of God. No bright price. It's just that they have taken drugs. They are taking needs. See a woman and marry. That is what Papa Kumo is saying. It's happening in the church now today. They don't follow scriptures. They don't follow the way, the principle that God lay out to get married. That's why you see divorces everywhere. Pastors are getting divorced because they didn't follow the process of Bible way of getting married. He's going to church. I like this lady, the way he sings, the way he dances. And then they will come and say, I love you. Let's marry. And after some time, so, oh i never knew it was like this with divorce and then satan have caught you that you that you have divorced so that is the problem today in the church false doctrine 
false doctrine. Those that are under John C. Suleiman, you think they will pray? They will never pray for God to give them the will of God. They will only look for those that dance and shake their bum bum very well. And many of them are doomed by getting wrong married. So be careful who you follow as mentor or copy their preaching or believe their doctrine. Because when you the leader, the pastor, the evangelist, the minister, you follow a wrong person that show you a wrong scripture, interpret it wrongly to you, and you to copy it and preach it to your, your congregation, all of you will go to hell. And this place called hell is where I want to tell you about today so that you can pity your soul and pity those under you because hell is not a place you can play with. It is not a place you are taking people life as a play because when you are playing with the scriptures you call yourself man of god you don't preach the truth you are damning people's soul to a place they cannot come back that's why god is saying we should be careful what we say to people please play winner shop i hear what they say then i go into my message play the last pastor winner shop that was just a second listen to what they say they are all they are not hiding it so if you want to be there if you want to go to heaven you're on your own but listen to this preacher Quickly, please, let's go. Somebody asked me, why is it that your church, they don't talk about, um, you know, rapture? It's not that we don't believe it, but we are not sent to preach it. It's not everything you believe you preach. Everyone is assigned to a particular way, to a particular assignment. Why is it that we don't preach about hellfire? Don't we believe it? Believe it very well. Satan and all who follow him will go there but we are not sent to preach it have you heard they are not sent to preach hellfire you can never hear them preaching hellfire but i remember jesus said we should teach them everything he has commanded us is it not so jesus preached about hellfire jesus warned his disciples about hellfire jesus said they should preach about hellfire because that will make people to hate sin and fear sin because that is the consequence of sin that is the judgment place is the prison place for sin when you are committing sin you know that if i die in this sin i'm going to hell so you need to know the things you are doing that if i continue this is where we end up if i'm doing good i'm living righteous god say when i live righteous i'm going to heaven so because of that you are encouraged to be keep on doing good and doing righteousness because you are hoping for heaven but if they are not telling you that this sin you are doing this is a place for you you will not know that this sin will kill you one day hallelujah why are we preaching hell to people in holiness revival movement i sister linda Daderica, everybody here for me i like preaching hell because nobody on earth don't want to go to heaven the muslims they even know about hell heaven but i noticed that many people are not aware the horror and the painful place called hellfire that's why you see a pastor in the house of god will be committing sin lying doing evil without bother without their heart pricking them because no fear of hell no fear of if i die now but in holy more here and in some holiness churches why you see people are afraid to commit sin it's because of the place that they know if i lie if i sin if i do this if i die now rapture take place i didn't go where i will go is hellfire that thought of hellfire keep us righteous keep us sit up so see what bible says in ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 to 14 ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 to 14 let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandment for this is the whole duty of man for god shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Because we have it in our mind that judgment day, God is going to bring it out. God is going to bring it out. So we guide our members that you know any secret sin in your life, God is going to pay it for you. God is going to reward you. God is going to reward you about the evil you have done. Let's turn to Mark chapter 9. Jesus talked about hell there. So if you say you are not called to preach hell, how will your people under you in your church know that some, a place like this is waiting for them if they continue in sin? And you and I know how their member looks like. And this is, this is how many of their members are living in deep sin because no word of fear of God in them. Because they don't believe that there is a place called hell. Hallelujah. So don't be afraid to preach the message, hellfire message. Mark chapter 9, I'm going to my message now. 
Mark chapter 9 from verse 43. And if thy hand offended, this was Jesus teaching, telling people the benefit of going to heaven, the horror of going to hell. If you know this, your hand is the one that used to make you, maybe you love money so much. He's not talking about physical cutting your hand with a knife, but pray and let the Lord cut that spirit that used to use your hand to steal, your eyes to watch evil, your mouth to speak evil. Cut it out, my sister. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into a life, ma'am, that having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. It can never be quenched. No water can quench it. Nobody can quench it. It will be like that forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. Where they are warm, diet not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter heart into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Hallelujah. Lastly, let's go to Isaiah 66 and see the torture. What is happening in hell? That's why I want to tell you, all the people I've gotten encounter with in my dream, when they are coming from hell, giving me a message, it is not that they are coming and they are laughing and say, oh, tell them we are in hell, although we cannot move, but they are giving us little food yet. That is not what they are saying. They are coming with terrible anger, terrible anger, because the place they are coming from, they are very, very angry. Isaiah 66, verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcass, of the men that have transgressed against me for their worm shall not die we have read new testament this is old testament the same thing their worm shall not die their worm shall not die if you die in sin you are preaching error your members are going to hell you too you will go to hell your worm that will be biting you will not die the fire that will be burning you will not be quenched hallelujah neither shall their fire be quenched and they shall be abhorring unto all flesh when people see you, that is what I'm going to share you today. All the people, by the grace of God, God has given us, uh, given me the ability, like I would say, it's a gift that I will see dead people, not that I will sit and see them. In my dreams, people will come up to me, which I know they have died, and say a pitiful thing to me. Maybe God is doing it to me to hear and to tell you so that you will change. Because these are some people you know, you knew them before. So that you will know that this is not a playing matter. This is somebody we eat together, we are pastors together, we are friends together. But now see this my friend, this woman, this man, this pastor. I'm not seeing him again. So this is where he has gone to. And this is the suffering. As I'm talking to you now, they are suffering. Underneath your feet, there is a terrible suffering going on there. As I'm talking to you, I don't like speaking about hell, but I like speaking because this is my calling. But I, it pains me when I talk about hell. Because anytime I talk about hell, I imagine my mother now as I'm talking, she's there. It's paining me. But I just have to do it because this is my calling. I am working for somebody who is Jesus. And he said I should work for him. And I'm happy to work for him. I don't have, I don't have power on my own. I'm controlled by Jesus. Hallelujah. I am here to tell you that hell exists. Pastor, pity the people under you. Preach the truth. If you keep on preaching error, they keep on drinking the dirty water from you, practicing it. When they die, they are going to hell. You are not sending people to hell. You are not ambassador to send people to hell. Satan is using you. But I want to tell you, this hell they are going to. Don't sit down and be laughing and say, oh, if they are going to hell me, I don't know. I want you to feel pity for your members that have gone to hell. Your family members you didn't preach to. Your friends that have gone to hell, sit down and be thinking about them. Feel it for them because there is no way they can come back. It's our negligence. You did it. You didn't preach the truth. And up to now, you are still preaching error. God brought you here for you to know the danger you are doing to souls, even to your own souls, even to your children, because your children are following the doctrine of their father. As an evangelist, you go out and preach. You are preaching error. As people believe that error, you have damned their soul to everlasting suffering. Suffering. That God is not happy with you. Now this one is saying, we don't preach hell. We know about hell, but we don't preach it. God calls us to preach prosperity. I want to tell you, if you are not preaching hell, eternity messages in your church, 
include it today into your doctrine because it's part of the message Jesus preached. Jesus spoke of hell as a place where the fire never goes out, implying unending torment. It's a torment that don't have ending. It's a place that don't have peace. Nothing peace is in hell. There is no light in hell. Now when you are here, you are feeling heat, you will go outside and get fresh air. You are feeling hungry, you will go and buy food. When you are getting tired, you can walk up and go and sleep. You wake up in the morning. When you are sick, you go to the hospital. When fire burns you, you rush, they will treat it and then it will cool. But those people I'm talking that have missed heaven today, nothing like this exists anymore. No water, no fresh air. No going out to, to eat food. No resting. No treatment, no medical. No food. No laughter, no joy. No sleep. Constant pain. Unrest pain. They are in torment. They are burning and they are, it's like they are doing recreation. As they are burning, their body is coming whole again. It's a punishment that I cannot describe. But all I want you to know is that it's forever. I used to make example to some people. I say, if you want to understand what I'm saying, carry your finger and put on the fire. Just stand there and leave it. If you can bear it, and keep on shouting, leave it there. Then maybe you can bear the fire. But if you cannot even carry a hot pot, my dear, don't go to hell. Because this one is not that they are going to tell you to carry hot thing. They are going to drop you inside fire. A fire that is higher and bigger than this torch. It will swallow you like a sea. You are inside fire. You are melting. You are burning. You are mixing. You are cooking. But you are not dying. You are not dying. And many people today have gone to hell because of being in the wrong church, being under you, because you didn't teach them the truth. It is a privilege for you to be here today, for you to hear this and ask God for mercy. For those that have died, your family member, you are a pastor, but your family member, you are not preaching the truth. Now you have heard the truth, you now regret, oh, I wish I should have said this to my brother, my sister, my this. But today we are hearing what is happening. In Luke chapter 16 verse 24, the rich man said to Father, Le Father Abraham, let Lazarus dip his tip of his finger. The finger, what can the finger, can the finger carry water? To just tell you the torment the rich man is party to, just to cool my tongue. He's not even talking about water first, to drink water to my test. Let my tongue be cool because my tongue is very hot. As I'm talking now, fire is burning my tongue. Since I got into hell, since I get here, the rich man was saying, Since I enter this hell fire, my tongue is burning with fire. I just need something to cool it. It's very hot. It's very, very hot. So today I'm going to share with you, remind you, re refresh your memory about people you, you have heard about. You have listened to their testimony. They, you have listened to the testimony about them. But it's good sometimes to, re, to refresh your memory. So that you will not play with it. I used to tell people sometimes. Play hell message in your home. So that the fear of this place will come upon you. That you will always be careful that I cannot go there. And as you are saying you cannot go there. You will be serious not to go there. The first person I will talk about today. Before I go on. Let me read First Corinthians chapter 10. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 to 12. Moreover, brethren, I will not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that, that followed them. And that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not pleased, well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our example. To the intent we should not lust after evil things. As they also lusted. You hear what Paul is saying here. The, refreshing the memory of the Christians. Don't forget, Christ was the rock they drink the water from, but they offended Christ. And some were dealt with, some were killed. 
So these things was left for our example, for we not to follow the same thing to offend Christ, to sin against God. So I want to tell you, I'm using your fellow brethren that all of them serve in this church. Some are not a person I'm going to talk about here. About three of them are not Christians, but others are Christians and they were leaders. Some of them are members of this church. But I want to tell you to learn from their example because some were here, but they were not serious. So that you will not drink from that same cup they drank in. That simply means they were drinking holiness, but they were not practicing it. Neither be idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written them. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, and as, as some of them committed and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, as we are destroyed of serpent. Neither murmur, yea, as some of them also murmured, as we are destroyed of the destroyer. You like murmuring. This is what we are saying. All these little foxes in your life, you call yourself pastor, you have anger, you lie, you murmur, you steal, you fornicate, you have lust, you watch pornography secretly, nobody is seeing you, but you know what you are watching on your blanket. You know what you are doing, you masturbate, and you come to the pulpit and preach, you steal God's money, you give false reports, your heart is adding, you do some kind of thing that is not good. Paul is warning us here today that we should not do those things our forefather did, and God did not spare them. And you too, God will not spare you if you continue to do that in his house. Now all these things happen unto them for an example, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that take it, think it is standard, take heed lest he fall. You as a pastor, you believe you are a pastor, and you believe you know how to preach, you believe you can carry crowd, you believe you know how to do evangelism, you say you are proud of yourself. The Bible says you should take heed, yes, you let you fall don't forget hell is real today just short short of past history of people i'm going to talk about this is a gift of god in my life i'm not boasting about it but i'm grateful to god a gift of dreams and revelation came from jesus to me and many things that God is showing me by the grace of God I'm here to say few of them some of our brethren that die the reason why they went to hell and when I have encounter with them in, in, in dreams they will say it like the first person I'm going to say here we never knew that some secret sin was in him but after we have the encounter I inquire from the wife the wife say more deeper things that it was a shocking thing to us that a pastor, a former pastor in deeper life and a coordinator in, deep, in Orimo was having this kind of secret sin. We have, we were, our former coordinator of Benue State, which was a late pastor, Moses Semeka, you know him, around 2014, 15, I cannot remember again, when he died, I think 2014. Since he's dead, I started hearing a voice saying, Pastor Moses Semeca miss heaven. But I disbelieve that voice. Why? This is a pastor I've had him preach one time. He know from deeper life, he know the scripture. So he preaches very well. And I believe that we are not only a preacher, as God said, we are also supposed to be a doer. So I believe as a pastor preaching like this, he's doing the word. And he's applying it in his life and he's looking very calm those that know him know that for me as i can examine him he's a quiet person gentle person but i never know he has some things that he needs to settle with god in his life so when he became sick we went to visit him and then one one day they told us he died and then this voice keep coming to me moses semeca miss heaven but i was disbelieving until one fateful day we were in the parlor I am Daddy Rika, we were doing our devotion. Then the voice told me that I am telling you Moses America miss heaven. You are ignoring it. You don't want to hear the message. Not for you, but for the benefit of others. I, I am going to give you the privilege, the opportunity for you to hear him live, what he's saying. So by the time I open my mouth to say, to explain to Daddy Rika what I'm hearing as we are doing devotion, it's like my hair get blocked. I was not hearing him, but I was seeing his mouth moving. So I just shouted. 
because the voice was like when they loudest loud this speaker i started hearing cry from hell life cry as we used to play it here life cry for my ears so i was shouting daddy cover my ears he was hearing me but me i was just seeing him moving and some of the things he was saying there it was a pitiful thing nobody is crying in hell it was a pitiful thing for me to hear his voice and i pick it up this is him and he was not laughing in his voice his voice tone was not a smiling or a laughing or a pitiful one it was a painful thing as he was talking to me i don't know how god did it but he's a god that we don't question me he has miracle to do everything so when he was talking i had the judgment of him and god all the secret things how he was being in the house i being do, do in the house of god the things he did in the house of god that was not righteous the covetousness the lying the secret sin the way they were living their family life was not right between you and the wife they were painting themselves as if they are holy when they come out but inner they were disagreement they were not righteous and then the wife came to say that truly there are some things that he she was saying let them confess it the husband will say you want to disgrace me you want to disgrace me just cover god has forgiven us let's pray and cover it secret sin land him into hell and i never knew he was an unbeliever to revelation it was in that revelation he was pleading to me that i should forgive him that he disbelieved my message and he was even discouraging people not to believe in prophecy in revelation and moses salinda and i was shocked because this is a pastor we see we love together we play together and even the encouragement say my sister keep it up god will use you but i never know it was a hypocritical encouragement hallelujah so all what you are doing in the secret i am bringing this for you to know that it will be open in your in your eyes when you die he was unrighteous he was not faithful with money when he died, we came to know that some of the things he was saying to the ministry, it was not true. The things was so shocking to us that how can the pastor behave like this? And as he was crying, he was telling me he has debt to pay. He was this, he was that, and he was crying. He was crying bitterly and was asking for mercy. Asking for mercy. And he was saying in his, in his revelation, that daddy Rika to pray that god should give him second chance that he will be so faithful now when he come to work well for god in the house that one pass now i'm going to one of our brother i love so much that died the former media staff late brother Carlton. this is i think many people will hear it now it has been for more than four years or three years when i got this revelation because he's somebody i like so much he was a friend to me and when he was sick one time i was in my house he was admitted in teaching hospital and then I, a voice told me jesus told me go to the hospital and prepare carlton and i told that Erica when i was going i said see what god said we should go and prepare carlton daddy said well go and pray for him go and ask him if you have anything because as he's sick now if you have anything you should have said but just go and tell him what god said so i went there i never knew it was cancer it was when i got there i got there and i was talking to him he was not able to speak well and all of a sudden the doctor came in with a drip and hung the drip on him i never knew it was a chemo and i've never seen chemo before so when they were giving him the drip he he was doing as if he's dying and held my hand and said mommy don't allow me to die so i was asking the doctor what are you giving him that is making him to be shouting but the doctor didn't tell me he just said he was shouting at him be as a man now why are you doing look see you are making this woman to fear now so after that the doctor went walk out i was like what is the problem so i told him i said Carlton, is there anything because i was in the house today i'm preparing to come and see you god said to come and prepare you is there anything so maybe god is this thing is in there in our prayer so he, he just do like hmm like that and say hmm, mommy i will talk to you so i was waiting for him so i had a discharge he came out i, I did a small celebration for my birthday my my daughter birthday he came with his children and he called me aside and said mommy he was not really strong and then he said that god really sent you to me that i have secrets in my life and explain some things he have debt to do debt to pay this that i say ah Carlton, 
if not God that make you to able to come out of that hospital if you would have died there this is how you take chances so what are the things so you now say you have some debt to pay i think my or where they came from and even in holy more some money that daddy will give him to buy some things he was not faithful in the sense that not that he purposely want to eat the money but because of responsibility he was lying he was stealing he was keeping some money and promised to pay back but he will not pay so that thing pile up so he was afraid to say it and whatever thing so i told that the daddy now say we are forgiving him all debt that he should write down the people he have to pay the movement is going to pay the debt for him so that time we were traveling to benway for crusade and then they said the sickness came so mightily on him he was not able to write down those people so we were in benway doing crusade the morning they now told me that carlton has passed away so i cried all through that day i was not even able to preach because it's like i supposed to testify i was so down i was like I asked, did he wrote down the name? They say when they went to him, he was stopped speaking. He wasn't able to speak again. Daddy sent pastors to them, to him. They went and prayed for him, pray for him. So that one passed away. He had died. We, they buried him. They went carrying him home. It took a thing one year after his death. Then I caught an encounter with him. He came to me in a lamentation and he was crying. He came and he was looking very very bad and i was asking because he's a fear brother i said ah, Kati, where are you coming from why are you looking like this why are you black like this i was even afraid of him he told me that he's going to his house to take his pass he said but he went to his house the wife locked him outside he was not able to take his pass and when he had gone the gate of heaven refused to open for him that there was a stain on his garment and then he was telling me mommy i fear to say this but my wife have sent me to hell i compromised the standard because of my wife then i was telling him in the dream what why 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 i was just asking him why do you have to compromise the standard cutting why why did so he was crying i am finished I am finished my wife has finished me this is how he was crying and he entered the darkness i didn't see him again i woke up i cry i cry and then another time again another dream of him this one it was very 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 disturbing i was even afraid to look at him he's coming close i was like no i don't want to see you he's talking and he was trying to talk to about his children to me but i didn't give him attention because where i saw it was like a room lock and was battered like when this book around people use matcha to chop people the body was pieces and he was still talking so when i look at these things i was so devastated i say a brother that is so serious he's saying he compromised the standard for his wife and the wife have caused him to miss heaven and truly the wife is not a member of Horimon. the wife is a winner chapel member always be angry with him working in Horimon. he really frustrated him we know that one but i never knew he, he he went to the point to satisfy his wife he compromised the standard that one passed another thing happened when i was in the sinful war i have a friend called telma she's a best friend to me she has a boyfriend he's a muslim we sit together and laugh i am bringing these things to you for you to know that if we don't preach to people and tell them the truth they will be crying with our name in hell if you don't tell people the truth some of you are ashamed to preach the truth some of you are afraid of man to tell them that my wife my husband my children my uncle my auntie my boss this thing you are doing is not good it will tell you, you are afraid of man instead you prefer praying praying let pray god will change the person sometimes god need you physically to tell them the truth you are afraid to tell your members the danger of hell of living in sin you think that if you say they will they will leave the church if you don't tell them the truth about the danger of putting their costing on their body about prostitution about makeup about attachment about hearing about bleaching about women disrespecting their husband about husband not loving their wife divorcee if you don't preach this thing and tell them the consequences of sinning and where it will take them to it will be a, a, a serious matter between you and God. So, I was a Christian but not a born again Christian. 
So sometimes we sit down and laugh and joke and play about Christianity. So I got my encounter in 2013 and he died 2013 November. He was sick. So they called me and told me that he had died. I felt it, but I said, I know you will not believe me because he have had my testimony and all of them, they were making mockery of it. So one fateful day, that was maybe 2015, 2016, and when he had died 2013, I had a dream. I was sitting in a chair and then I saw somebody coming. Like when you say bomb explosion, the person was coming from that place towards me. I wanted to get up from the seat where I was sitting, but it's like I was glued at the chair. My heart was panting very fast. I didn't recognize him. I didn't know he was the one because this is a fear, brother. You know, this Fulani people, he's a Muslim, he's a Fulani. So, this Fulani people, they are very fear. He's a fear, brother, a fear man, a young man. But when he was coming, he was burnt black. So, I was thinking it's even a demon because I cannot see the face. It was just dark. He walked straight to come in front of me. And then when he came in front of me, he started pointing at me and say, you are wicked. You people are wicked. Linda, you are wicked. I was confused. How am I wicked? He said to me, you people did not tell me about Jesus. When we are talking about Jesus, you were busy playing with it. You were not serious to tell me about Jesus. Now I have died. No Muslim is going to heaven. Linda, you are wicked. Tell me you are wicked. That's my friend, the, the girl she was dating. Then I noticed it was CD. I started crying with him as he was crying towards me. And I was pleading to him. I said, CD, me too. That time I didn't know. I didn't know the truth. He said, You didn't tell me about Jesus. You people allowed me to die. Linda, I am suffering where I am. I am in pain. Why did you people do this to me? I was pleading with him. I said, please, my brother. It is not that I know. One of the things is that I was so afraid. I thought that he would beat me up. Because the chair, I cannot get up. He was just standing in front of me like this. So I was pleading with him. I said, please. I didn't know God that time. And then he said to me, I want you to go and tell my father. That he has killed me. He showed me the wrong doctrine. Tell him he drew, he taught, he taught me to use charm, and then he bring out a ring that the father gave him for protection, and stoned me with the ring. I said I should go and give the father the ring, and then he said, "Let me tell you, so that you will tell my younger brother. That is the only brother that remain. That he should run to the church. He should run to church. He should leave. He should stop going to mocks." And then he explained to me that Linda, when I die, I saw people on cue. And I saw a great man sitting on the chair, a very powerful, very looking powerful. And then the place around him was bright and beautiful. Immediately I spotted him. I said, This is Allah. I was very happy in my heart. When I get closer to him, I bend down, I worship him. And I said to him, Allah Akbar. And then the man replied to me and said, I am not your Allah. I am not your God. And then I said to you, No, you are the God I've been worshipped. He said, No, you are not the I'm not the God you have been worshipped. You don't know me. He said, God, Jesus told him, You don't have my character. Muslims don't know me, they don't have my character. I'm a God of peace. I'm a God of love. I'm a God of long suffering. I'm not a God of brutality. I'm not a God of killing. I'm not a God of hatred. And then he said, I told him, but if you know Jesus, you were the way. You know, I was a child. I, I was born in a Muslim home. And then my father taught me how to worship Allah and follow the Muslim doctrine. You that you are God, if you know I was following the wrong doctrine why you didn't send a message to me for me to change and then jesus replied him and said the world you are coming from there are two religions there fighting this one is saying they are the true way the other one is saying they are the true way 
why you didn't sit down and pray and ask and say god which way is the true way why did you take one side and believe one side before you believe a thing you should have confirmation from god why you did not ask god and say god which way is the truth way and jesus told him if you will have prayed and asked for the true way i will have made myself known to you but because you believe and follow the side your parents show you that's why you are lost today and then jesus now stretched his hand and said see the god you have been serving and this is the spirit that is inside you people the wickedness the killing the brutality this is it and then he saw a demon with a curved head and the demon was carrying the Allah on his forehead and then Jesus said to him depart and then he said to me Linda where I went to I never believe that we ever end up there it is a terrible place and when he was talking I know what he was talking because I have been there even your enemy you don't want them to be there he was crying profusely. He was crying and was crying. And he was saying, you people are wicked. Linda, you people did not tell me about Jesus. You people did not tell me about Jesus. I want to tell you, anybody on earth now, you are preaching to them. They are being hung, uh, stubborn. It's because they have not gone there. Don't get tired. Because everybody that go to hell, those that are there and some of us that went there we we are saying the same thing the punishment there will get your mind off you will do as if you are you are mad because you can never believe a suffering like this me when i was there i i was like i cannot live here i was not believing it i was angry with finda i said my sister you know it was like this i didn't know it was like this Finda, why you did not beat me? Because the pain I was passing through hell. I wish somebody that knows that hell is like this. The person should have dragged me. And you pastor that you are here. You will see your children committing sin. Your children are dressing waywardly. Your children are coming to church rudely. And you are laughing. You are not bothered. You are heartless. You will see your members are committing sin. You are keeping the truth from them. You are heartless. You are behaving like Satan. Because when you see somebody doing sin, anything sin around you, you will not get to rest until you take care of it. Your children under you should know that I am not happy with your life. Your members should know that you are not happy for them living in sin. Because you know where if they die where do we go to one of our sister very fervent woman she tried on her daughter she preached to her daughter she flew with her daughter to nigeria we spoke to that girl she didn't do it she made up her mind not to hear the mother got tired and leave her the way she would one faithful day we were at home i just saw my phone ringing and then they told me the girl went to take by to order food and bring the food to pick up her food coming home she collapsed and died the mother know where her daughter has gone to she started calling mommy let god give her a second chance when i asked what happened they called the doctor try to recover her we started praying we started praying i was crying because while I was crying, this girl was very stubborn, but she didn't even know the place called hell. She thought hell was like a prison. Now she has died. Careless death. Satan killed this girl carelessly. We started praying. I was crying till one in the morning. What pains me more is when we are praying, we are praying. Then we are, mommy, please pray for us. Please pray for this girl. As we are praying, the Lord said to me, the way you people are praying now are disturbing heaven, shaking heaven with prayer. If this is how you people have been praying for our conversion, it should have been better. But you people, we are praying with her. Tell the mother, tell them. They leave her to herself. They expect me to change her. Somebody 
that rejected me, hand in her heart as small as she is, tell the mother not to bother. I will not send her back. What is the benefit of her living for me? I started crying. I imagine this small girl in hell. She never knew the, the, the consequences of these things. The enjoyment of boyfriend, enjoyment of putting makeup, trousers. Now she is seeing the end and the suffering of it. I cry. I feel it for her. I feel it for her because she is not coming again. And she will be regretted why she didn't hear her parents. I am begging you. I am feeling it. When we are seeing sinners are multiplying in the church. When we are going around preaching in the church. We just came back from Anglican church. I was crying. When I see all women in errors. When I see the pastors are still arguing with the truth. I cry. I said, what is wrong with these pastors? Somebody is coming to teach the people the truth. They are ready to receive it. The pastors are contending with Danica. Try to kill the truth in the members. When the members are thinking of repenting, they are accepting the truth. You pastors are sitting here. You are the Pharisees that are blocking revival in the church. You people are fighting Jesus. Pastors are the ones fighting Jesus today. Jesus is taking sinners like us. I was not born in, 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 in Bible school. I didn't go to Bible school. We were only going to church. I was a chain sinner. Jesus took me to heaven and hell. Speak to me. Tell me things that you that know the Bible will, will open it and say, it is true. This is God. But when I came back with the message, it was pastors that fought it. In my country, people change. Women were so repenting. People were changing. Youth were changing. Prostitutes were changing. Running to church. Bishop, they go to the ear and say, Sister Lena is from the sea. They should not believe her. They started lying. Everybody is saying their thing. Just to make people not to believe that they are deceivers. To cover up their nakedness. What shall it profit you, Bishop, to gather these people? And one day you will die. See, T.D. Jakes have died now. He's seeing it now. He's seeing it now. What shall it profit him now? I am telling you, T.B. Joshua have died, living a big mansion, big, big church. He's suffering it now. He's regretting the day he follows Satan. He's regretting the day he loves congregation more than his soul. This is how this brother was crying. We have many Muslim family friends. We have neighbors. We are afraid to tell them. We cannot speak the truth to them. We cannot say it to them. I'm pleading with you. Pastors. I beg you. Hell is real. False doctrine will destroy you and your members. Holiness is a hard preaching but it is the truth. And that is the truth that will set you free. Pity these people under you. I want to tell you. Attachment will not take anybody to heaven. Believe it today, I am a witness. My own nobody preached to me. It was a life experience. Satan mocked me. I was burned. I was beaten. I was, dis I was battered. I felt the pain of hell. The hand of Satan touched me like this. I, I felt the hand of demon on my body. How God did mystery in my life to revive my soul again. Up to today, I give him the glory. Because only him know how to take life and give life. I was in hell. I didn't see it on movie. It was life before me. It was life on my body. They told me attachment, lipstick, earring, bleaching, fornication. Trust us is not for women. But you people are not preaching it. You are not quiet to sing with trousers and say, Live there, there's men trousers, there's women trousers. But they didn't tell me that in hell that I was wearing men trousers. They say it is an abomination. Satan told me and said, Are you not afraid of God? 
The one that made you say, don't put it on. Are you not afraid of God? That is what the demon was telling me. If me, I'm not afraid of God. Are you pastor? You are teaching people not to be afraid of God. But Satan is telling people to fear God. You are laughing with your children, laughing with your husband, laughing with you are not bothered, you are not crying, you are not telling them to fear God. You look at them, you celebrate them in their sin, you show them more love in their sin. You don't love those your family members. Now I'm coming to the recent one. Before I go there, how many months or years? It was just one year ago. I got this revelation and it has been like that I told that Erika so now we decided to like no worry no, no, let's just say it God wants us to say it our former coordinator of Lagos the pastor Abue when he died we heard about it a pain source what we can do nothing because he have left that is same people there or a more member went there. I think it took one year plus. My mind was not on him. I was not thinking about it. God is heaven is my witness. But one fateful day, I was sleeping. And then I saw myself standing under my mango the mango tree by my house there. I was talking with somebody. Then I heard somebody was shouting, Mommy run, mommy run. Like somebody is coming to hit me. So when I turned, it was him coming with like a stick to hit me. So I run like I was running to the mountain. So I run to a place. I climb up and I was looking at him down. Then I asked him, Pastor, what have I done? Why are you, why are you pursuing me? Why are you running behind me with a stick? I will read some of his word. He said, why, you, why did you people harden your heart to restore me? You know I was in error. You know it's because of anger. And you know I was not doing well. You people are wicked. Then I say, how am I wicked to you, pastor? He said, Linda, my daughter, you are wicked. I am very angry with you people. I am the one talking English very well. But these people... When you see them in dream, you will be crying, they are crying. Because nothing good is looking at on their body. When I'm talking, they are naked, they are burnt. And most of the time, having encounter with these people, it is not that they are dressed. They will come fresh like they are burnt, like, like burnt bread. Come bring it out from oven. So seeing them, you will start pitying them. And when they are talking, you will pity them more. He told me, he listened to bad counseling about Horimo, about Pastor Rika. And truly he was angry. But we knew that we should have called him. Then I said, Pastor, I said, Pastor, how can I call you back? You say you have left. What have I done? In fact, me, I was, what have I done? What have I done? He said to me, I wish to come back, but pride and shame do not allow me. Because of what I said about Pastor Rika, you, Sister Lina, and some brethren in Horimo, and what I said about Horimo, the bad things I said about people, put a stumbling block to me to return back. I was really, really bothered. I really wanted to come back, but pride and shame was hindering me. And then Satan took over it and struck me down. When I appeared before Jesus, Jesus said, my word is the final authority over every matter on earth. If you were hurt towards your brothers, I said in my word, if you have hurt towards your brother, Leave your gift at the altar and go and settle. Did you go and settle? But you respect and prefer pride and shame over my word. He said, that is what Jesus told him. Jesus said, you die with bitterness. 
towards your brethren. Have I not said my word is the final authority? I say that if you have a heart towards your brother, go and meet your brother. Settle. Why you did not go and settle for this heart to remove from your heart, but you die with this bitterness and you follow bad counselors that make you to live in your, in your heart. What have you profit you now? Now depart from me. He now said to me, Jesus told him that you started, that Jesus recommended him and said, you started well, my servant. You started well, my son. You really got my salvation. And you were doing well. But you, did, but you play with it and trash it. You were, not, you were not serious about it. You listen to carnal people and you give yourself to pride and anger. Now, you never know your time is shorter than those that advised you bad. What have you profit you now? And you know, no bitter person will come here. No unforgiving heart will enter here. You die without forgiving your brethren. You die without settling the peace with the church. Depart from me, you walk out of iniquity. And then he said to me, See what you people have done to me. You people know that it is not easy for a backslider to be restored because of the powers that are out there. Why did daddy did not call for me? Why did you people love me to die with bitterness? I look at this man. This is the man I know. This is the person I know. He's crying, I'm crying. He's crying, I'm crying. I was telling him, I said, oh, pastor, you know the truth that right? you know the truth he said you know it is not easy outside there satan is stronger satan is stronger linda why you people did not call me i am suffering i am suffering i am suffering i am suffering i started crying with him as a pastor oh god have mercy on you he said to me this hatred has gone into my family how will i deliver them from this bitterness now because this bitterness will destroy them he's trying to tell me the hatred towards this movement towards her the family members are inside the same hatred and he knows that this hatred will destroy their soul if they die in it. You see the danger? When you are angry, you carry your family member, begin to tell them bad things about other people. And you die without settling peace. And this hatred, Satan will build on it. This one will keep malice. This family will not talk to this family. This is how Satan will destroy the entire family. Satan knows that only one sin will hinder you. You heard what Jesus told him. You are here complaining. God, they did this to me. I was not angry. God said, my word is superior than all matters on earth. No matter the, pro the problem you have on earth, my word, follow my word. I say, when you have heart with your brother, go and make peace. You refuse. I don't know who you are having in your heart. I say, pastor, you are not talking to the other pastor. You are all in the same, con same area. You warn your member, don't go to this church. You tell them evil. You are not even telling them not to go to this church for good thing. But don't go to Horimore. If I see anybody go to Horimore, if you don't put Yari in your ears, you will not take communion in this church. You are hindering people not to hear the truth. This is how some of them, they follow your counsel. They fear you and they die. Today, some are crying here because you hinder them that time when they believe the truth. And you force them to change. Nobody is coming from hell and is laughing. Nobody is laughing. And as he was crying, I was standing up because he was carrying something to hit me. I stood up. I was looking at him. A thick smoke, like a cloud, was rolling like a ball, like this. And came and wore on it like a cloth. I rolled it back again. I didn't see him again. I woke up. It pains us in our hearts. What can we do now? I'm pleading with you. Forgive anybody that will offend you. Anything, any settlement you need to do, do it now. 
because you can die before your offender settle it and leave the case to god even if you are the one that have right accept the wrong and be peaceful just settle because life is too short and god when god told me and said i will not change my standard for any man if you want preach all the preaching you are preaching this year win all the souls in the world if you sin against my word and you are found guilty my word is the one ruling over there it's scriptures they used to judge us with they will judge you with scriptures the last one i'm going to share is something that happened may we got a striking news from the village that daddy daddy rika let mother die we were in togo when daddy rika told me i felt it in my heart but it was sickness but before this time the first time i got to the village after our wedding when daddy was introducing his family members to me and then i come across his stepmother after some time i told daddy rika i noticed something is wrong with the, mo with the woman as god showed me so daddy was doing all he can he was sending he was sending messages cd bringing them from the village to come here preaching to them sometimes you have one you want to talk with them i've gone to the village so many times i've testified even the last time we went there i was sitting with her talking about heaven hell you know talking to her talking to other neighbors people will come around so but you know some of these people that are inside witchcraft you can preach they will even be supporting you in fact they too will start preaching you'll be talking about hell they too will be talking ah, i'm telling you these people they don't want to change so you'll be disturbed how can we tell this person now this is my mother-in-law this is daddy mother uh, stepmother you know it is not easy to look at somebody if god did not tell you to say so when i had she died we don't know what to do for me i just said oh, i don't know what to say but to god be the glory so just last month maybe two or three weeks ago i had a dream in my dream it was in my compound I was inside my house i had the gate man was shouting at a woman madam madam please leave this place madam please leave this place so the woman too was shouting and was crying and was yelling that give me road get get out from my way i want to go and meet pastor pastor is wicked i want to go and meet pastor then the gate man was saying, no, you cannot go and meet pastor. You cannot go inside here. Pastor is busy. You cannot go inside. So I was hearing their shouting, two of them. And then it's like when they are shouting, they are talking, you know, dream, how dream is. You can be seeing dream, in, seeing vision in dream. So I was seeing them, two of them, what was happening at the gate. So I noticed that late mother was having like a sore on her body. But the, the saw on her body is like a cook saw, like when you cook a meat. From my head to down to her sole of her feet was all cooked. That if you touch her like this, the skin will be coming out. So the body was like pus, like pus, like bones that have pus inside, very watery. And the, the, the skin is too soft to cook. Even when she was talking, she was shouting and she was crying. When she's trying to hold the gate, her skin will, left, will be on the gate, will remain on the gate. When the, the gate man is trying to push her back, her skin will be fixing on the gate man. Hand. So the gate man was so afraid. I was like, Madam, please push. He was afraid to touch her, but she was forcing. And she was crying. And said, give me way. Let me go and meet pastor. Pastor is wicked. Pastor is wicked. Let me go and tell him what he has done to me. Pastor know that I was a witch. 
and he, he didn't deliver me he didn't tell me he didn't force me to come out of witchcraft he was just was just using wisdom for me to come out for myself and pastor know that i cannot come out for myself no witch can come out for themselves pastor no it is not easy for a witch to come out and say i am a witch but I, but pastor should have forced me in fact pastor rica should not have even allowed me to deny that i'm not a witch but she should have forced me to deliver me because they know where this place called hellfire how it is and then the gate man said to him but mama but mama you didn't hear the word for yourself how will you say pastor no if pastor is not aware now you are saying pastor is aware he cried she was crying and say pastor no i say pastor no pastor no i'm a witch pastor is aware i am just here to come and tell him the wickedness he have done to me because where i am i never thought in my own imagination that a place is like that even if my witchcraft power was still with me I, the power will not have any effect on what i am passing through now i am suffering i am suffering i never know suffering will be like this all the preaching i've been hearing about hellfire i take it to be as a joke i never believe it's a serious thing i never believe i will go to hell and then he was telling the get man give me way to go and tell him why did he why did he keep it why did he decide to hold the truth he never allowed you should have forced me is our own is that the rica should have forced her say mama sit down here you must be delivered then i came out i look at her very pitiful burnt everywhere then i said to her abba mommy but you know daddy has been preaching to you people daddy has been bringing you he has been talking to you why you you did not repent for yourself he now said that i should not provoke her don't provoke me you you people know the the place called hell and you know and you did not you did not deliver me you should have forced me your husband should not have even allowed me if maybe maybe he's thinking that if daddy was afraid to tell him or don't want to make him look as if he's accusing her wrongly daddy should not have that the rica should not have even give her chance to say is it true or not he should have just arrested her because since that the rica is a man of god and he knows about the terror and the horror of hell daddy rica will not have given her chance but now daddy rica was quiet leaving things to done naturally then i should come and that he want to come and tell that erica where have you seen a witch come out and say i'm a witch that we don't have that power to come out for ourselves he that have noticed that i'm a witch why he did not bring me out and he was crying she was crying she said to me see what your husband have done to me you people know the danger of hell you know the horror of hell my daughter i'm suffering i never know hell is like this i am suffering the punishment i'm passing through here no punishment is like that in the whole world my suffering is too much my pain is i cannot describe my pain i never know it is like this but why do you people keep it for me why you people did not force to deliver me she was angry and she was crying her body was just like that dropping her skin is cooked falling on the floor and then i woke up i shared this dream to daddy and i say what are we going to do with some of these people that truly we know they are not clean jesus help us god help us but all what i can say here is to use this microphone and tell you people the truth you that you are inside witchcraft you are a wizard you are a cultist you are a, you are inside any kind of society for power you are dealing with charms i want to tell you the danger of that thing your ending will be terrible the best thing you are now is when you are alive and you can repent 
God can deliver you even if you have been in a witchcraft for 30 years, 40 years. It is not about the year. The power that Jesus has can deliver you in a second. The charm, whatever you have swollen as a pastor for power, you have joined pa a pastorhood or any kind of thing, they are threatening you. If you come out, we will kill you. My pastor, it better they kill you. You will die as a, as a righteous person and go to heaven than God go and kill you in hell. If you fear the men dead, you fear your fellow men to say, they will kill me. But you do not fear God. God own killing, God own death is more painful because man will kill you and you will die they will not see you again in the sense that even if they kick your dead body no life but god will, will torture your soul and spirit that will never die so fear god own judgment fear the judgment and as i'm running up jesus took me to hell and showed me the department of pastors all kind of rank and titles workers in the house of god the department of hell where god is dropping ministers in the house of god when i saw that thing i wish to be an ordinary member in the church that will not carry position that tomorrow the bible says much is given much is expected i prefer to be an ordinary person but when god has put you you don't have anything to say you will only say god give me grace for this position but if God is asking, I prefer to be a quiet sister sitting in the church. Because what I saw with my eyes, the punishment for pastors, preachers, prophets, prophetess, all these workers in the house of God, that you are thinking that the punishment is only for a pastor. You as a choir, as a usher, you are working in any department, any, any department in the house of God, a evangelist, a prayer warrior a pastor a reverend a missionary i want to tell you as you are a leader for any place any group of human be preaching the gospel today teaching anyone sunday school teacher your sin if you die in sin your punishment is greater than that member you are teaching your own spot party your own department in hell it is where satan is the bible has made us to know in revelation that the first prophet and those that be, be, took the mark of the bee will be cast into the lake of fire with satan witches and wizards all workers of iniquities agents of darkness they will start from the bottomless pit with satan where the fire is cooking boiling to come up pity your soul come out from witchcraft come out from occultism come out from false doctrine pastor reverend bishop forget about the title save your soul now maybe this is your last message you are going to hear confess your sin come out from that brotherhood For, drop false doctrine when jesus took me to hell i saw pastors they are burning they are burning the fire is mixing with them they are talking fire is coming out of their mouth as isaiah 66 is telling us it is an abhorring for man to see it was a fearful thing for me to see their looks somebody is vomiting fire the eye burst out the head the skull has opened they are burning they are mixing but that person is still talking when they saw jesus they were shouting jesus have mercy on us we will not see it again jesus send us back they were crying when they saw jesus and then jesus was asking few of them because they were multitude and jesus turned to me and said to me there are many pastors that have died on earth with big name that many people will not believe they are in heaven they are here it's you people that worship them for title i only know righteousness and holiness he said they are here and he begin to ask them seek confession some of them are saying they invent false doctrine we are inventors of, of false doctrine to cover up their sin all these things they will tell you it doesn't matter if you commit sin on the body that, that it doesn't matter pastor chris here Kilomi will say masturbation is not a sin homosexuality is not a sin if you check there now that is what people are doing in their church they will tell you sleeping a pastor will be sleeping with a girl he said it doesn't matter they will not preach to you the truth that will make you not to sleep with them and they were telling jesus some of these things some of some of them say i sleep with the widow some of them say i lie some of them say i'm a cultist pastor i'm a wizard women 
that they are inside they are regretting why they opened a church they are regretting why they were ordained as pastor and they were not preachers of the truth so god is telling you god is telling you thank god you say you are called but let your calling not go in vain by preaching the, the, the wrong doctrine look for people that have the true word of god Horimo, holiness revival movement this ministry is to train you is to teach you the truth is to make you know how you can answer scripture understand the scriptures don't just read and begin to say it on your own and destroy your soul and people as many of you have crowd under you so as jesus was going with me out of hell we reached to a place and jesus did his hand like this when jesus do his hand like this anytime he did his hand like this anywhere the person is in hell the person will come out i want to tell you jesus is powerful he's a powerful god you don't need to ask is this person here he knows any everybody that is in hell and me i cannot recognize anybody here hell was so big that even gogorala cannot contain it it's big he can swallow gogorala he can swallow this abuja hell is so mighty so big but jesus know everybody that is in that hell when he did his hand like this i never know he's bringing out my mother for me he did his hand like this the first person that came out it was my friend but i didn't know it was my friend the person was coming out with fire like a ladder that have catch fire and the ladder is dropping when you are raising it up the person body was falling particles but the, the body was still intact like a human being but it has been burned it came immediately and kneeled before jesus every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that jesus is lord even those in hell when they come out of fire they go down their knee you are here you are not fearing jesus you don't respect him use his name to lie jesus said when he did not say when he kneeled down before jesus the person called my name i want you to just imagine what i'm telling you somebody that have been born the skull the eye have burnt out the body is dropping but the person can recognize me but me i cannot recognize her that is what is happening in hell you cannot die your senses are still fresh when she called my name i was looking at this person like an animal roasted animal how did he know me where did i know this person from i don't know you but when he called my name linda beg jesus for me is your friend gifty i cry my friend i love so much she died two years before my conversion and our pastor was a rev our father was a reverend he said to jesus please have mercy on me my father did not prepare me for heaven my father was the one spoiling me you see jesus please have mercy on me my father did not tell me the truth he didn't teach me the truth oh jesus show me mercy jesus show me mercy jesus take me out of here linda please plead for me i look at her and then jesus said to her it is too late my daughter you can send a message and then he said to jesus if you cannot forgive me let my father come here please let my father come here my father did not teach me the truth let my father join me here with my suffering i pleaded with jesus for my friend and then jesus said it is too late as soon as jesus said it is too late the fire will rise up like a wind like a human being and then it will behave like a glue it will glue the person and bring the person down i said god please have mercy on my friend i didn't see her again then jesus walked jesus was going he reached to another place and then he did his hand like this and then another person came out and the person came out the person was burning the fire was dropping out of the person's body i was looking at the person i was pitying the person the person is burning the fire is dropping out of the body and then the person said my daughter my daughter you don't know me again my daughter says i have no rest i have no rest please have mercy on me i shouted with all my voice i said jesus please save 
my mother. Jesus. I grip the leg of Jesus. I say, Father, if you cannot save anybody, please save my mother, God. Jesus, I beg you, please save my mother. Jesus, I beg you. I look at my mother. I cannot recognize my mother. I pity her, but I cannot hug her. I was afraid of her. Because I know she was so she was looking so disgusting. I cannot be able to look at her. She was looking like a dead animal. I was afraid of my mother, my mother, my mother. My mother that gave back to me, I was afraid of her. But I wish Jesus to change save my mother. And I look at the face of Jesus. And Jesus started to cry with me. Jesus started to cry more than me. And then I say I was looking at him. Is he crying because he's feeling pity for me? And then Jesus said to me, Jesus said to me, My daughter, it's only your mother you have seen in this hell. And you are crying in pain. You are crying with all your heart. You are feeling the pain so much. But my daughter, Take a look at the people that are inside this fire. You cannot count them. They have been here generation to generation. And these are my children I die for. These are my children I suffer for. Do you know how many times I have been crying for them? I am still crying because I see the wall. Those that are still in the wall are still trooping here. My daughter, I am losing my children. I am losing my children when I look at the wall I look at the church I see the church is dirty I see Satan has taken over my church my children love their enemy more than me they decided to follow they are following their enemy I am seeing them troop into this place and this place was not made for them I am crying more than you my daughter I am in pain more than you I love my children but because and then they turn to me and say I am God I'm not a man I will not change my standard for any man I will cast them to hell as sinners but still my heart is behind them but still I still love them I'm sending you to the world my daughter Jesus turned to me and said I am sending you back to the world. You are going to tell them. You have, I took you to hell. So that you can see the horror of hell. So that you can able to explain to man. To know the danger that is waiting for sinners. So that you can able to tell the pastors. That they are playing with gospel. That they are playing with my word. That they are allowing Satan to come and deceive them. That they are thinking they are doing their best. Tell them that sin will destroy them. And then I say to Jesus. They will not believe me. Who will believe me? Who will believe me? I'm a poor girl. And the names of pastors you have shown me. These are millionaires in the world. They will kill me. But Jesus don't send me back. And then Jesus told me about a movement. Some of you say somebody introduced me to this ministry. I listened to mommy Linda testimony. I came to this ministry. I, sister Linda, nobody introduced this ministry to me. Jesus himself told me about this ministry. He looked at me and said, my daughter, I am sending you to my ministry. I have established my ministry on earth. And that ministry is the ark of your generation. It is the, the, that ministry is the one I am using to revive holiness, to awake my children that are sleeping. Because denomination has failed me. Denomination has failed me. The shepherds on the earth, majority of them has failed me. The, 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 the evil ones have overshadowed the righteous ones. Hey, and then he said to me, I am sending you to that ministry. The man that, is in, that, is, that I put in that ministry to preach my word. My son that is preaching my word in that ministry. When you go, you hear him. Whatever he is telling you and preaching to you. Believe it. Accept it. Apply it in your life. Listen to the statement of Jesus. Many of you only hear you are not applying it in your heart. You still have anger, unforgiveness, backbiting, jealousy, wicked thoughts. And even when you are here, you only dress holy. You only be a member or a pastor of Holy Mom. But your life is not showing that you are hearing and applying it. Jesus said, he did not say join them and listen to him. And say you may, he said, if, he said when you go, join them one. 
listen to the message he's telling you the message i have put in his mouth what is preaching is the message that satan have removed from the church removed from the mouth of the, the preachers and that is the message that will save save their life and the and, and my children but today satan have removed that word and the word is holiness without holiness no man shall see the lord i have put my mouth my word in his mouth when you go when you listen to him believe the word apply it in your life and then my daughter you will be saved when i come home and then he said to me the name of the ministry holiness revival movement worldwide jesus gave me the meaning before i came across all the more he said holiness is another name for god is god reviver god reviving holiness revival movement god reviving his children in holiness and is moving them to heaven go and join my movement holiness is me and god sent me back and i came i listened to the messages when i was in hell i said that god i judge god i say you are wicked <clears throat> god you are wicked why are you punish us like this but when i listened to doctrinal messages from bible i came to know that i was under the wrong pastor that did not teach us the truth so that's why i was judging god that god is wicked but i never knew it was my pastor that is wicked he never taught us the word of god now that i'm in a ministry where they teach us the word i know that god really have given us everything everything called expo for we to make heaven but because the pastors are not teaching it people now that are in hell are blaming god that god is wicked god why are you doing this to us we pay money we give tight we dance for you you do not take us to heaven they never know that it's not only giving that will take to heaven they never know it's not only dancing but when i've now come to the ministry that teaches the word i now know that i was i was even hundred percent ready hundred percent guilty to be here because when i listened to the messages of holiness i came to know that i didn't do any one thing called holiness i was not part of the way for heaven so this is how many pastors you are blind you have zeal you teach but your doctrine is out of the way completely by the time you begin to listen to sound doctrine you yourself will know that ah am i sure i'm a pastor so i am pleading with you today hell is real heaven is real but today many are on the broadway because of false doctrine false teachers are too much and they are the richest many of them are the richest many of them control the world because people love soft carnal preaching where you will tell and live your life the way you want all they know is prophesying prophesying so today it is your time to repent and cry for those ones that have died under your feet that you were their pastor you were their family member you never helped them to make heaven and you have been a pastor in that family nobody have gone to heaven in that family and you still claim to be a pastor you keep you still claim to be a reverend sister a, a senior sister a born again sister but all your family members that have died in that house in that family you see them you didn't preach to them so today cry that you have sent somebody to hell maybe your daughter have died your son have died you have now come to know that all the teaching was wrong doctrine to your child and your child have died with wrong doc doctrine maybe your wife have she have died or your husband but you people were running ministry but today he or she is in hell thank god that you are alive that today you will turn to the right way you will do a u-turn to the narrow way and come out from the broadway so that you and others under you or you going to the street preaching you will save other people with the right doctrine let's be on our feet think about yourself think about yourself think about yourself how many people you have laid down the grave pastor come and pray for this sister she have died our church member you do big ceremony you dance you preach very well but now your eyes have opened that that sister didn't make heaven that brother that pastor you were busy ordaining a divorcee a elder in the church which have divorced the wife you have sent them to hell and those people are crying now with your name pastor your brethren are crying with your name your sister is crying with your name ask god for mercy 
ask God for mercy. And some of you, you know how to give people bad counsel. You listen to our late pastor, what he said. The one in Lagos that say bad people counsel him to hate this ministry, hate Dadarika. You are good by advising people badly. You are good by increasing their anger, giving them bad counsel. Whatever you sow, you will reap it. Your tongue that you are making people to leave the house of God. My sister, go. Orima is not the only way. My pastor, leave this thing. No bother to come again. God will measure for you your punishment. Hindering people not to come. You are hindering them not to come for, to make peace. You are canceling them bad. Brother, don't come to hurry me again. In fact, don't bother to make peace with them. Go away. Without them, you can leave. You that you are giving bad cancer to people that have backslid. You are the worst enemy to God. You are a bad pastor. Open your mouth and say, God, show me mercy. God, show me mercy. You refuse to preach the truth. You hinder somebody. When that sister removes your ring, you begin to mock and preach against that person. We don't want people looking like, oh, you are mocking your sister, your brother. Ask God for mercy. Ask God for mercy. Ask God for mercy. Your mouth has chased people out of holiness. You have made some people to backslide. Sister, you are looking old. Go and dress. Who told you? Yali is not a sin. Now you have come to know it's a sin. Ask God for mercy. For you to make that sister to go back to her vomit. Ask God for mercy. Tell God to show you mercy. Ask God for mercy. Or else you will end up in hell. God keep your record. God have your record. All the evil you have done in your life. Ask God for mercy. Tell the Lord. Lord show me mercy. Lord show me mercy. God show me mercy. In your neighborhood you have never preached. You have never won souls in your office. You are afraid to share the gospel. Ask God for mercy. Many of your friends have died. You have never preached to them. But you are there saying, hey, I know my friend, he, he did not make heaven. I know her life. Did you preach to her? Did you convince her? Did you force her? Ask God for mercy. Ask God for mercy. You know the truth and you kept it to yourself. You are a selfish and wicked Christian. Ask God for mercy. Tell the Lord to show you mercy. Ask God. In Jesus' name we pray. If you know you have sinned against God, or you know you are truly you are not a preacher of holiness you are all this prosperity preacher you are all these false prophets and prophetess you busy telling people i see the lord say the lord say where the lord you know all this sugar-coated jargon that is what you were doing the church busy keeping people in prophecy and people are dying under you in sin you truly know that you are a pastor where you have anger masturbation lost immorality is your problem you are not a pastor stop deceiving yourself you are a drunkard you are a thief you are an hand robber or you are a pastor you have joined a pastor who all these pastors that have cl club cultist pastor free mercy pastor juju pastor or you are a witch you are a wizard or you are a sinner you have never given your life to christ you only open church because of money you know god did not call you you call yourself you cannot deceive god come and say god show me mercy wherever you are or you have backslidden you want god to restore you back raise up your hands all eyes closed this is the time for divine cleansing for a exploit ministry a fruitful ministry if you want to go and have a fruitful ministry it's when your members are righteous fruitfulness is people that are going to heaven not crowd of sinners raise up your hand if you want god to transform you and give you a true ministry please take a bold set let us run before the king of kings and the lord of lords no time to be ashamed if you know you want to restore your life back to god you want god to polish you you want god to show you mercy you have done evil many have gone to hell under your name you cancel people badly but now you are going to be a true preacher a true evangelist a true missionary a true brother to that family a true sister a true choir a true usher a true worker in the house of god maybe you are a worker in the house of god but you are a thief you are an robber you are doing one thing or the other now you are going to serve god in that house of god the right way today you will serve god well ask god to show you mercy if you are a witch you are a wizard you are a cultist person you are in the in the cult come and say god i'm sorry even if you are a little child you are flying in the night you see what this witch said he wished that the rica would have that press on her now it's now she's saying they should press on her but if she was alive the press on her she would be saying oh they lie against me but now she have gone to see reality you people think that hellfire is a movie 
I want to tell you this place is real. Satan is only deceive you as a witch or as a wizard. Don't confess. Tell them it's not true. You are ashamed. Satan will be the one that will torture you. So wherever you are, God is here to forgive you. When God rises up for you, Satan cannot come close to you. That power of witchcraft cannot come close to you. Come and confess and say, God, I have done so many evil. It's enough. I will not do evil again. Little children, come and give your life to Jesus. Come and give your life to Jesus. You that you are preaching error, come and tell the Lord to show you mercy. Tell the Lord to show you mercy. You that go up and down and give false prophecy and revelation to rob people from their money. The Lord says you should buy this for me. The Lord says you should. You know you are lying just for money. Come and tell God because those sins are waiting for you. Satan have those record against you. Come and tell the Lord. Anything you have said that is not of God. Let the Lord show you mercy. All the things you have said God saved or God did not say. Come and say God I am not a prophet. I was just lying. Your evangelism is money making. In the buses you collect money. You are doing it because of the money. Not for soul's sake. Come and tell God have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon my hypocritical life. Have mercy upon me Jesus. Save my soul. All unbelief. You don't believe jewelry is a sin. Attachment is a sin. Makeup is a sin. Naked dress is a sin. Instead, you even preach and told women, don't worry. There's nothing like that in the Bible. Come and tell God. That statement alone, you have fought against your God. You have done evil to God. You are fighting against the pricks. And you know you can't kick against the pricks. Come and tell God, God, I have deceived many people by telling them that hearing was not a sin. Now I know it is a sin. I will change my doctrine. Come out. Come out and tell the Lord, show me mercy. You have spoken bad things about this ministry. You have said evil things about Horemon. Come and tell God, Lord, forgive me. I will not say any evil again. I will not talk bad about any ministry that you did not tell me to say. God, show me mercy. Father, show me mercy. You are not living well with your family, husband and wife, fighting secret fight, disobedient disrespectfulness. And when you people come out, you say you are holiness, but well, you know you are not a man of God. You and your wife are not living well. Your children are wayward. You compromise the standard with them. Come and tell God, Father, give me the boldness to handle my children the way of God. Put your word in my mouth that they will believe me and they will change. Help me to live well with my wife. Make me to love my wife. Give me the power to submit to my husband. Jesus, change my life. I don't want to serve you in vain. Come out. Let the Lord give you a new spirit, a new heart. Creating me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew right spirit within me. Lord, creating me, creating me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew right spirit within me cast me not cast me not away from your presence oh lord and take not thy holy spirit for me restore unto me thy joy of christ's salvation I renew my spirit within me. You don't know the day you will die. Come and settle with God before you go back. Jesus name we pray Amen The message has come very clear I want to speak to those who are in witchcraft God can bring you out of it for with God everybody says something 
all things are possible all things are possible including coming out of witchcraft but we leave the matter to you it is of choice there is conversion among the muslims by those who are determined there will be conversion among the witches and the wizards and occultic people by those who are determined the late woman said which witch will come up and accept that he's a witch the witch that opens her heart to receive the gospel to be convicted by the world will come out but those who don't want let him that is unrighteous be unrighteous still A decision of your own to leave witchcraft and come to Jesus call upon him for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord he shall be saved then seek counsel seek counsel don't hide yourself he that hideth himself shall not prosper he that confesses openly, do it. Don't mind it. Come to the leadership and confess. He that confesses and forsaketh shall have mercy. Please do it. And for you, you know now the danger of false doctrine. Preaching things you don't know what. In the name of I am a pastor, I am an evangelist, I am prophet, prophesying evil, prophesying everything to make a name, following mentors that don't know God to damn your soul and the souls of others. Repent of that wickedness. Tell God, Lord. I come before you with repentance. Say it. Forgive me of all my sins. Change my life. Change my ministry. Change my mentors. For you who have bad, evil, wicked mentors. God give me eternal life. I have decided from today to take you seriously. I will serve you. I will confess my sins openly. Where required, I will do restitution. Thank you for hearing me. Because I pray in Jesus' name. I'm praying for you. Father, what excuse can these ones give? Even those who didn't come forward and are sitting down in their sin. Father, you have shown them you are still ready to forgive let not the devil convince them that they cannot be delivered from witchcraft they can be delivered because the bible says with god all things are possible oh lord jesus do it here yeah. do it here yeah. in jesus name we pray yeah. in jesus Jesus name we pray Amen. forgive their sins Amen. and give them eternal life Amen. let them become useful ministers before God Amen. the grace of the Lord be sufficient for them Amen. the mercy of the Lord go with them Amen. the goodness of the Lord come on them Amen. Jesus name we pray
Now, before we run up finally, you heard of my late mother in law because my mother died in 1985 and my father had to marry a young woman in 1987. She is the one that died about two months ago and the burial was held three weeks ago and the Lord brought her from hell and she is or she was blessed blaming me I am wicked because I didn't force salvation on her is it possible to force salvation on somebody it is in hell she is thinking maybe if he has used force upon me i would have agreed that is the voice of hell because she is wondering why did i not repent it is in hell she is saying can any witch deliver herself can any witch confess and say i'm a witch yes it is cursed but others say so others say so she has come to this conference more than 10 times she is a dominant compliant if you see her no earring she dresses like a holy woman because of the teaching of this movement much has been done in fact maybe about three weeks before she died she asked that i should send a radio a radio I'm an MP3 for her, and I did that. I did that. Apart from the ones I've been sending all these years, even when my father was still alive, I've been there. There's no relation of mine that will blame me that I didn't reach up unto him or her. Not one, none to me. Not one all has been done money has been spent i really even applied force to bring them here but the bible says even the brothers of jesus did not believe on him what did jesus do he forced them until he finished living his life on earth none of them believed on him it was afterward the grace of God began to walk eh? so he's Lord ah, so he's God how much more of carnal man a no man, a carnal man that is a man of flesh and blood like them many of them have their doubts have their own pleasures of life but that's the complaint and you may think really that I was wicked I didn't do what I should do I did all that a human being should do by the ability of God but since they harden themselves hellfire is is there for such type of people what do we do again is for my relations who remain when I when my wife told me this revelation I said all my relations shall hear it all of them it shall be hard worldwide forget that my name is there in condemnation let them know that the ones i am still that are still alive should know that i am i have walked on them and i'm walking on them if they want to escape hell submit the lord has brought this good thing to their family they can choose to take it or not to take it the other part one pastor joseph abue was the state coordinator of holiness revival movement lagos he really did wonderfully well he retired from nmpc he did wonderfully we were using his house for horemore in fact his house headquartered horemore in lagos from the beginning of Horemon. Very zealous man. But all this Michael Sambo politics. 
came on him and snatched him snatched him away and he became he went wild against holiness revival movement wild we did all to redeem joseph Abue. we did everything i kept on i kept on one time i told the lagos tech coordinator the one that replaced him tell joseph Abue this conference he should be here i am ready to send him transport money he sent him to me that what is he coming to do now what i should tell him what he should come and do i said this person has gone far i should send him flight ticket so we didn't have money to be doing that i will send you transport you have been coming by a road how many times have you come by flight so all effort on joseph abu felt and now he is saying you people didn't call me in that pride you rest up and the the false group you had gone to join who had power to bring you out except to leave you with god is to leave you with god we have finished our power there's nothing again we will do man has his heart man even when god spoke to cain where is adam abel your brother he said am i my brother's keeper why are you asking me i'm talking rudely to the creator talking rudely and the lord want him if you had done well would you not will he not have been well with you but be careful evil as is at your door and the evil is desiring your life he didn't bother he went ahead to do what he wanted to do and destroyed his life will he now be blaming god god you have all the power why didn't you force me god you have all the power why didn't you make me faint god you had all the power why didn't you make me die go to hell and come back so that i could have seen the power of hell and repent god doesn't do like that listen you who are leaders coordinators when you come into this movement with your family leave yourself your wife your children to this movement in the name of jesus because the movement teaches the word of god and administers it if we find fault in your child or in your wife maybe even in yourself and take the right scriptural course on you all you should do is seek repentance if it is not you if it is on your wife know that you and your wife are two different persons leave each one before god all you need to do is to pray to take defense on your wife to the point that you say you will leave holiness movement that is the most foolish thing you can do in your life and in your existence because as you're getting out of this movement we see a person that has lost heaven where are you going where are you going where do you allow anger to rest your life what will you tell god god has question to ask you do you know the heart of your child everybody answer do you know the heart of your husband everybody answer do you know the heart of your wife everybody answer if god who knows the heart of that person is dealing with that person according to the knowledge god has what's your business in his creature are you the one who created the person are you the one who created the person why do you want to do things that will bring judgment on your life is it god now that will pity you 
even if it is oppression why don't you leave the person before god to oppress to be oppressed does not god leave did he not give up job so that satan can oppress him he said you have him but don't take his life satan did everything he could do on job the lord knew he was going to give job double promotion why are you not allowing god to have his way with his creature wow that with all these things you have learned in this movement from the beginning of it it shows that nothing you have learned nothing me i'm wondering all these messages you are listening to assignment listen to 80 messages listen to this number of messages books read this number of books read the bible it didn't register christianity in your heart you never learn from god you never learn how to surrender your life thy will be done was it a simple thing to go to the cross even jesus said take this cross from me but nevertheless what did he say not my will but done dying be done i have come according to the volume of the books that is written on me to do thy will O god have you sought the will of god have you sought the mind of god don't allow anybody to convince you pastor rica is a sinner then god is a liar then god is a liar don't allow anybody to convince you pastor rica is oppressing him i am oppressing nobody i am oppressing nobody i have a soul that will stand before god for judgment the most fearful person of hell on hell is the holy man is you who don't know the meaning of uh, hell that's why you are careless to do anything you do the man that knows the truth is afraid many people can eat with unwashed hands but not a medical doctor he knows more about bacteria he knows so he's very careful what he eats so don't allow any person to be going about corrupting you and to send you with hell to hell that is what satan did and pulled down one tenth of the angels and they have lost heaven don't allow any man to make you lose heaven by telling you stories according to his own mind and you have never heard the other side you have not heard the other side he that wants to go with satan let him go before he comes to that point god has been tired god has tried 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 and given him up we have tried and tried and tried and we have failed what do we do then what do we do look at him saying hey you people are wicked you didn't you would have called me you didn't call me if i don't tell you this you would think really that we were casual as he was speaking it from hell we were not casual we work hard sister i didn't play carelessness nor pride i didn't i have witnesses among the leaders we worked together but ma 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 is determined to go to hell it's not ready to hear god it's not ready you are preaching so i don't even want to hear your preaching i don't want what will you do how will you do it leave your sister to jesus don't interfere leave your daughter to jesus don't interfere leave your brother to jesus don't interfere when he was creating her were you there leave your wife to jesus don't interfere leave your husband to jesus don't interfere if you do this it will be your wisdom don't die because of somebody else the bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man and be not partaker of another man's sin that's wisdom let's rise up together and you go have your seat and pray for these people that satan deceives them makes them stubborn to the leadership of the church
whatever excuse you are giving you're in hell already then what is the value what is the value why didn't you save yourself why didn't you save yourself open your mouth and pray against rebellion the devil is walking pride in your life you are not able to discern it what job the lord has told you that how you have been in this holiness movement you have known this thing you are going out in your pride say big one you may never come back thank you message you have just listened to is a production of holiness revival movement worldwide holiness revival movement worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816 902 Three nine four eight O zero eight zero five six eight three four three two three. You can also reach us through our email address Holiness Revival Movement at Gmail dot com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my
I believe. 